The story is so fascinating because now we know through the use of LIDAR that there really were complex cities in the Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Which is just incredible that yeah. the, the jungle just swallowed up all these very complex structures. Yeah, it's funny because somebody sent me a video of um, Graham Watkins. Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock. Um saying how he was like, yeah, and he goes, you know, the jungle is basically a human-made garden. And then, of course, I went and talked to, like, every scientist I knew because I was like, come on. And they're like, look, you know, in the areas around the rivers, there were complex – there was no debating it. There were complex civilizations, sometimes larger than we th think. But in those areas, you see a higher prevalence of, like, like – like he said, like, they'll plant Brazil nut trees. They'll plant, you know, whatever. I don't think bananas were there at that point. But where there was some gardening happening. But – what what worried me then was then like Smithsonian came out and put out like an article and they were like, is the Amazon created by humans? And it was like, oh God, no, 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 no. Because like then you're changing it from a designation of like this incredible complex wild ancient ecosystem to if people don't understand the context of what he's saying, that 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 people engineered it in places. And then the headlines went to the Amazon was made by people. And then you have people like Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, who's no longer in, in office but just being like, well, if we made it, we can manage it, right? Oh. Let's go take it out. And it was like, I was like, oh God, I was like, oh. I was like be careful. I was watching him on your show, and I was like, oh, be careful, be careful, be careful. Because like, mm. the work he does is great. I see what you're saying, but the implications of that narrative. Yeah, and again, the, yeah, a hundred percent. There are, there are, dude. I mean, there, there's, there's, you find pottery in places, but it's always near the rivers. Like, there's evidence of ancient civilizations. You want to hear the craziest thing? One of my guys found a stone axe head. Now, here's the thing. The uncontacted don't have rocks. You won't find a rock on our river. There's clay. There are no rocks. They found a stone axe head in the jungle at a site from the uncontacted. But what that means is that the uncontacted tribe had a stone axe head that, was, that they've been holding on to since like Inca times. Wow. And someone forgot it at the camp. And so you're talking about civilization carrying around something from a previous civilization that they don't know where they got it from. It's like incredible. Wow. Because you cannot find, a, there, are, there are no rocks like that on our river. It was like a, a smooth gray stone shaped into like a blunt ax head with, you know, made, you know, so you could attach it to a stick. And they found this on the beach and they'd been using it to like clean turtles. But we don't have those rocks. That's more like an Inca type of thing. So this has been floating around through various people's hands in the jungle for decades, centuries, who knows? And what do they think about where that came from? It's wow. lost technology that they don't understand anymore. So the thing about the Lost City of Z was that there was a previous expedition that had encountered these cities and these incredible, yes. beautiful, complex cities and they described how elaborate their clothing was and their culture, their agriculture. And so then when the next expedition went back, there was no one was there gone. because yeah. they had killed everybody with diseases. This is the yeah. That's yeah. the theory, right? Yeah, and I mean, Oriana was the first person to like go descend the Amazon, which the thing that always dr drove me crazy about that was that they came down the Andes made their way down the entire Amazon and then like looked at the stars, figured out where Spain was, built a whole other ship and sailed home. Like, <laughs> think about that for a second. They built a whole other he ship. He built a whole pirate ship and sailed to Spain based off the stars. Wow. And like now, like you look at us now and it's like, are we smarter than that now? Like how many people can find your way anywhere without like But what is smart, phone? really? You know, I, what, what yeah. smart is, is your ability to use information correctly. Now, what information do you have? Like, they had information that we don't have because they needed to be able to navigate using the stars. And they didn't have to deal with the kind of night pollution that we have. The light pollution that we yeah. have at night is... It's one of the greatest tragedies about modern civilization is that we've blacked out one of the most spectacular things yeah. that you could ever see. The thing that really centers us and humbles us, which so, is the view of the stars. Yeah. There, I went to the Keck Observatory a few years back. I went last year, but... 
it was really good last year, but not this one time. The Keck Observatory is in Hawaii on the Big Island, and you go way, way, way up through the clouds, mm -hmm. and the view of the cosmos is like you are in a spaceship with a clear glass windshield, and you see everything. There's no light pollution on the island because they have diffused lighting for all their street lights, specifically designed so that it doesn't fuck with the telescopes. Wow. And so when you're up there, the I'll never forget it. The one time that I went, which was at least 15 years ago, maybe 16 years ago, that one time was so spectacular that it changed my view of, like, Earth in, in the relationship to the cosmos just by seeing it. Because you see the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. You see mm -hmm. everything. You see all the stars. It just took my breath away. I couldn't stop staring at it. I was like, this is insane. And then... I was thinking, God, this is everywhere. This is what the ancients used to see before mm -hmm. we figured out electricity and blunted it all yeah. and, and r ruined our relationship with the cosmos visually because that's what every city does. When you look up at the night sky, you don't see jack shit in New York City. You see a star. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the moon. That's it. What, what is up there is the, literally the most spectacular thing that humans could ever witness, and it's there every night if you don't have light pollution and cloud cover so like you're saying like it would be like almost like more stars than black you Just see like everything completely. man you see yeah. ev it's incredible so they're very careful at the observatory there's no lights that get in the way of anything so when you get outside of the building and there's just people lined up on the roads and on the hills that are just staring up at the sky because it's perfect. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. It's so many stars. It's everything. That's what it looks like. That's literally. <sighs> that's literally exactly yeah. what it yeah. looks like. That is with the your naked eye. Observatory. With your naked eye, man. Jeez. It's amazing. But it's this understanding that that's up there all the time, and you can't see it because yeah. of light pollution. But see, that to me is so much of what we're doing with nature right now, where it's yes. like we're dulling it down. Yeah. We live in this incredible reality, and it's like we're dulling it down. Like like in the Eastern Cape where I've been working with the guys from Vetpaw, like the elephants have smaller tusks or no tusks because of poaching. Mm. And it's like you're taking this incredible, monstrous, giant so, so land. Is that animal. a natural selection thing? Like the, the ones that have smaller tusks are allowed to survive? It's because so they're the targeted. Yeah, right. they're targeted for the big tusks. So the big tusk ones are getting killed, yeah. and so somehow in response to that, yeah. they're developing smaller tusks so that they're less attractive? To the point that they're even having no tusks. It's like it, it, it like genetically bottlenecked them so quickly because over the last hundred years, the humans were all going for the big tuskers, and now these monster tuskers, like the really big ones where they touch the ground, there's only a few of them left. That is so wild. And so we, and then moose, like in Maine, they have smaller antlers, and like mm. we're actually like we're 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 dulling down the 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 magnificence of the of the universe. Like when you look at those pictures, you're like, why don't I see that? A picture if we saw that every night.